Uh, our next speaker will be Andrew Wren. He is the water resource engineer with the Prairie, Re Prairie River Rivers Network. He leads the water and energy program at the Prairie Rivers Network, uh, which works to protect clean rivers, lakes, and groundwater from coal pollution. He holds a bachelor's and a master's in civil engineering from the U of I, specializing in, really? Hydrology and hydraulic engineering. Don't be scared. I serve on a task force with Andrew. He makes it so even I can understand what he's saying. So don't worry, you don't have to have those kind of degrees. Uh, Prairie Research Network uh, has been a leading advocate for protection of the Middle Fork since its formation. And tonight he's gonna talk about the relationship of coal ash impoundments with respect to pollution of both groundwater and surface water. Andrew. So I'm wondering, can you still hear me? Do I have to use this if you can hear me? I have to use it. <clears throat> so um, I'm Andrew Rain, I'm a water resources engineer with Prairie Rivers Network. Um, we work, Prairie Rivers Network, if you don't know, is a nonprofit that works in the state to protect rivers, streams, lakes, and also protect the health and beauty of watershed communities. And for many years, Prairie Rivers Network and its members have cared about this river, have canoed this river, have protected this river. And so I'm here to speak for them. Um, I've paddled this river a handful of times already this summer. I wanted to go today, that was my plan, but then the river rose seven feet in a night, and so it wasn't possible. Um, but uh, every, every time I've been there this year, and the year before that, and the year before that, the seeps are there, they're flowing, and this year they look worse than ever. Um, so I'm gonna be quick, because I think this has actually already mostly been covered. I'm just gonna fill in a couple gaps. Um, I'm here to talk about what we know about the site based on documented evidence. So um, I wanna talk about what we know about the groundwater, what we know about the seeps that are going into the Middle Fork, and what we know about Dynagy's plans uh, for how to fix the site. And with a few exceptions, basically everything I'm gonna tell you is from Dynagy's own documentation, because that's the vast majority of the information that's been produced. So this is coming from Dynagy for the most part. Um, and we're gonna start with groundwater contamination. Uh, we've talked a lot about groundwater uh, uh, sampling and, and I just wanted to quickly explain what that means. So uh, this is a picture of wells. So these little red dots are where they're putting in monitoring wells. Um, and that means that they drill a hole and they can take water samples there and then they can test those samples for things like uh, uh, boron or arsenic and they can also evaluate where the water level is, so how high is the groundwater. So Dynagy has done um, a study, the, the last groundwater sample we have is from 2011. So we really don't have a complete picture, we just have one year of data. Now there's another year of data coming out, but still that's kind of two small slices in time. And additionally, we really only have this space uh, where there's wells. So like there's some regions where there don't seem to be wells and therefore we don't know exactly what's going on in the groundwater there. Um, and so, so what we do know from this limited information is that there's a problem. The groundwater on the site is contaminated by coal ash stored in unlined impoundments. Um, here's a quote from Dynagy's closure plan from 2014. Previous closure plan, we don't know what their new one's gonna be yet. Um, but uh, it says indicating groundwater quality at the facility has been impacted by leachate from the OE, which is the Old East Ash Pond, the oldest coal ash impoundment at the site. So we know that there's contamination. This is not new. The other one also has contamination documented in a similar document. Um, we also know that there's contamination because the Illinois EPA has verified that there's contamination with the violation notice, which was discussed. Um, this includes uh, things like boron at over 20 or exactly 20 times the groundwater standard at one of the wells. Um, so this is all documented. It's, it's, it's a well-known fact. It's not anything that we know it's there. Um, so groundwater is clearly being contaminated by coal ash. Um, and it should be noted that this is, in the, this is the case at most of these sites. There's uh, around two dozen power plants in Illinois with coal ash, and at the vast majority of them, the groundwater is being contaminated. So again, we knew this was happening. Um, we're also seeing that that groundwater is flowing into the river. So this is a picture of uh, some of the seeps. So this is a rock stained orange. And I know when we show these pictures, oftentimes, People are like, wait, it's, I, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. So here's what it would look like otherwise. So seeps are common on the, in, in the river. Groundwater seeping into the river is common. What's not common is it having a bunch of stuff from coal ash in it. So normally a seep just looks like clear water flowing over gray rock. And this is what you'll see all along up and down the river. That's what you're expecting to see. Um, at Dynagy, we have the red stuff. Um, 
And if you uh, also downstream of where those seeps are, it pools and collects. So this is a, an orange pool of water that you could canoe into because it's so big of all that seep collecting. Um, so I'm gonna let the seeps speak for themselves. Um, and there's a lot of it. There's over uh, 100 feet of riverbank that's seeping out. And this leachate um, is entering the middle fork. Leachate meaning leaching stuff from coal ash. Um, and that's been verified by Prairie Rivers Network, it's been verified by Dynagy, and it's been verified by Illinois EPA. So we went and sampled in 2016 and 2017, and we found that uh, there's arsenic, barium, boron, chromium, manganese, molybdenum, sulfate. Uh, I wish I could just say those off the top of my head, but I do have to read them. Um, and uh, they all exceed the background levels, and for many pollutants, they also exceed health-based standards set by US EPA and Illinois EPA. But we're not the only one documenting this, and you can see how extensive it is through these videos. Um, Dynagy's 2016 Security and Exchange Commission filing states that our hydro hydrogeologic investigation indicates that these two surface impoundments impact groundwater quality on site, and, and, and that groundwater migrates off site to the north of the property and to the adjacent middle fork of the Vermilion River. Um, so not only are they polluting the Vermilion Fork of the Vermilion River, but less often discussed, they're also just polluting the groundwater north of the site, which is state-owned land. Um, and in 2008, Illinois EPA took a trip on the Middle Fork to sample these seeps at the Dynagy site. Uh, and again, that's not even all of it, but just to give you the idea of the extent of the seeps. Um, Illinois EPA sampled in 2008, and they had no problem collecting seepage. Sorry, this is a quote. They had no problem collecting seepage at the base of the berm, which is right on the riverbank. Water quality analysis confirms that this was ash seepage, i.e. leachate, i.e. groundwater entering surface water. Um, so Illinois EPA has also independently verified that there are seeps of coal ash going into the Middle Fork, um, but no action was taken. It's clear that Dynagy's coal ash is seeping contamination into the river, um, but Dynagy has not acknowledged that outside of their reports. In public, they'll say there are no seeps, so that's, I guess, confusing. Um, and uh, here's just another image of uh, what we're looking at. This one, taking a step back and giving you an idea of how close it is to that green hill is the coal ash impoundment. The, the dam itself grasses over, but that is, that's, that's holding back the ash. And so we're, it's really close. Um, and so the last thing I want to talk about is Dynagy's plans. So as noted before, Dynagy's in this ongoing closure process. And they've released a suite of closure options um, recently that have very little documentation, really just a list of options. Um, one of those is pictured here. This is what they're describing as their plan, um, but there's four other ones. Three of those five uh, are caps. Uh, they also looked at removal and uh, beneficial use, um, but with no detail, just a price tag and a picture like this. So. Um, what they want to do is a cap, and the cap would alleviate the problem of rain entering the top of the impoundment. Uh, what this doesn't fix is that the bottom of the impoundment, which again is unlined, would still be totally exposed to the groundwater. And to illustrate this problem, it's like if the forecast is rain and you're standing in a swimming pool, it doesn't matter if you have an umbrella because you're still going to be wet because you're standing in a swimming pool. The groundwater is the swimming pool. It has water even when it isn't raining. And so this ash remains saturated and wet, and that groundwater flows into the middle fork. Um, we made it clear over the years that we have concerns with the groundwater model. We talked about groundwater modeling earlier. Uh, that they use to justify their solution. Um, and our concerns relate to things like modeling assumptions, boundary conditions, and the model's capability to handle changes in the river and groundwater level. Those concerns aside, the computer modeling doesn't even demonstrate that it will bring the groundwater on site into compliance with groundwater quality standards. So the model that they proposed as the solution does not show that they bring themselves into compliance within 40 years. And that was the horizon of their modeling. Uh, so their model shows that the wells nearest to the river are still contaminated 40 years later. That's their proposed solution model, at least their previous one. Um, so the Middle Fork is Illinois' only national scenic river, a precious resource, resource which connects everyday people to nature, providing a natural escape from cities and farmland. Dynagy needs to stop polluting the Middle Fork, and Prairie Rivers Network has filed a Clean Water Act complaint to hold them accountable to their mess. I want to say special thanks to Pam and Land Richard with Ecojustice Collaborative. This is really uh, an amazing thing that they put together, so thank you to them, and thank you for your time. Thank you.
Thank you.